Who is the cathedral and what do they do? I think there's a concept that's going to be very useful for us going forward. It gives voice to an idea that I think many of us might have in the back of our heads, but need the terminology to wrap around it. And so we're going to talk about the cathedral today. Now, the guy who originally came up with this is a blogger by the name of Curtis Yarvin. He originally wrote under the name Minchus Mulbug. If you're interested, there's just hours and hours and hours of video that people have taken from his blog of him kind of explaining this concept in depth. So if you want to go on a deeper dive, I really encourage you to. It's a fascinating listen. Yarvin can be a little bit of a crackpot in some areas, but this is a very useful concept. And so I want to explain it so that when we use it going forward, it's clear what we're talking about. So who's the cathedral? What do they do? Have you ever noticed that when politicians in America get elected, they often don't have the ability to make the change they promise? Now, we all know the trope of, yeah, politicians, they just lie to get into office and then do something else. But I think it goes deeper than that. I think even those who have sincere interests still have a hard time getting those moved forward. I think that we find out that when these people get into power, even if they have total control, they often have an inability to bring their campaign promises to bear. Why is that? I mean, just look at Donald Trump, right? He ran on serious immigration restrictionism. He ran on building a wall. But we're four years in almost, and he's going to get reelected or not here soon one way or another. The point is, we're no closer to the majority of those restrictions, even though he could easily have implemented them at any point. I mean, he had control of the House at one point and the Senate. He was appointing judges to the federal bench. He was putting people on the Supreme Court. According to the old division of power theory, the old branches of government theory from Montesquieu, separation of powers, he should have been able to make those changes. He had all of the levers of power and still for some reason we don't have the basic campaign promises why is that why doesn't he deliver what's involved here well i think there's a good explanation and the explanation is the cathedral now the cathedral is a nexus of political power in the united states of forces that are very good at controlling what goes on in the united states and what actually gets approved what actually gets passed what actually becomes law and how it actually gets enforced How does it do that? Well, first and foremost, we need to understand that America is, of course, in many ways, a democracy. Yes, technically republic or representative republic, however we want to say it. The point is, people vote, people make the decisions in theory, right? The power is supposed to come from the people. But of course, you don't get elected and become a powerful politician by convincing one person. You get elected by convincing large, large groups of people. One individual voter, not a big deal. Two million, three million, five million, now we're talking, right? So the ability ability to control or manipulate the expectations or opinions or cultural norms of the voting bloc is a great way to get elected, keep power, maintain power. What does this mean with the cathedral? The cathedral is the mechanism by which progressive authority has had a continual stranglehold on the United States. They are the reason that nothing ever seems to get done when the conservatives are in power. Nothing ever seems to get done when the Republicans or the right wing are in power. The cathedral are a nexus of the news media, the entertainment media, like Hollywood or the music industry, government agencies that are outside the direct purview of the president and then universities schools education in general and in fact universities and schools will be the most important part as we'll see here so how does this work how do these people get together and create this progressive culture that makes sure that nothing gets done when the right wingers are in power and democrats or progressives are more likely to continue to maintain power well here's the idea basically This is not to clarify a conspiracy. And Yarvin is very clear to point that out when he's explaining the cathedral. That's actually the strength of the cathedral, is the cathedral is not a bunch of people getting together, maniacally rubbing their hands together, saying, ha ha ha, we now run the country because we've told everybody want to think, here's our newsletter so you can read all of our evil plans and you too can parrot out our propaganda. That's not how this works. In fact, the power of the cathedral is in the fact that it's decentralized. It's like a peer-to-peer network. It's not all in one place. It's not all on one page, but it's close enough. It's enough people voluntarily working together in a positive feedback loop to continue to hold power, to maintain power, to protect each other, and to make sure things don't change in a direction they don't want and slowly always change in the direction they do. As Yarvin says, Cthulhu swims, but he always swims to the left. So, 
What's this idea? How do they do this? Well, basically it begins in the education system. The people who are going to become the news media, the people who are going to become the screenwriters in the entertainment industry, the people who are going to run big studios, the people who are going to run major government agencies that are there, no matter if there's a Republican or a Democrat in office, those people all have to go to college, right? They have to come up through the education system. They have to get degrees in higher education, oftentimes spending six, eight, ten, 10 years to make sure that they're steeped in all of the ideas that come out of the university. That makes sure that everyone in power has received the same kind of teachings, the same kind of thought processes. If you've been to college lately, you know what we're talking about here. Sure, there are going to be people in the room who have a conservative opinion, but you'll constantly realize that either you're in the minority, or even if you're not in the minority, it's best to keep your mouth shut. That constant pressure is going to slowly make sure that you adapt the way you think and the way you express yourself. You start to notice that then when you go into the workplace, that all the people around you tend to also make sure they parrot back similar ideas in order to get jobs. If you want to go into certain corporate places, if you want to go into teaching, into any type of intellectual work, you have to make commitments to diversity, to inclusion, to all all kinds of progressive values. And this is not by accident. As Yarvin points out, and to be clear, Yarvin is an atheist. He's not a religious person. But he points out basically what we're building here is a new theocracy. You need to commit to the doctrine of progressivism. And the doctrine of progressivism has crushed out all the actual religion and has just taken its new values. It's taken the structure of religion, but has crushed out all the actual beliefs that actually make it valuable. And and so the new theocracy that you need to adhere to in order to move forward, in order to get the new job, in order to become important, in order to get an education, that makes sure that you are now on the progressive bandwagon. And now as you ascend to places of power, you're checking every other person you run into. You're looking, if you're in news media, you're checking other news media. If you're in education, you're checking other educators. If you're in the entertainment industry, you're checking other content creators. You are constantly enforcing this idea that the progressive notion is the best and anyone who steps outside of it is a heretic. You immediately shun those people, you immediately push them to the side. Again, this doesn't require a conspiracy. No no one had to sit around and say, all right, we're all on board with this, right? It's a constantly reinforcing internal mechanism because it is these people's value system. It is their morality. And so as most moralities do, it tends to internally protect itself. So the strength of the network is the fact that it's not a conspiracy. The strength of the network is the fact that these people are inadvertently but continuously pressuring each other to go further and further down this new theocratic road. So our democracy, this system in which we're supposed to separate from church from state and all the power is supposed to be separated, actually ends up being a new kind of theocracy. Because even though the people are technically voting, all the people who control the ideas of the people are sitting in the cathedral. So the cathedral slowly but surely guides opinion. It manufactures consent. And so people are constantly having their opinion guided to where the cathedral wants it to go. Again, not because everybody got together and decided this is how things are going to work, but because that enforcement mechanism, that internal pressure is always constant. This starts elevating, as you can see now in politics, the professors and the experts to the position of actually running the government. The president or politicians, congressmen, senators, individuals can talk about leadership, but if they step outside the experts, if they don't have the right studies, if they don't have the right peer-reviewed papers, if they can't produce the statistics, then they'll be pilloried. They'll be thrown down. They'll be called idiots and fools for not following the university's approved plan. And so all of a sudden, our scientists, our experts, our statisticians, they suddenly become the new priests of this new theocracy. They're the ones that hold all the power, and you don't dare question them or you'll be thrown out as a quack, a crazy person, a science denier. You'll notice how quickly the left and progressives go to science denial now on everything, because they're basically just screaming heretic at you. You haven't adhered to the new faith? You don't believe with enough fervor in the new science? Then you are some kind of heretic. You're some kind of quack. And 
everyone should look at you funny and shun you. Now, this is not to say that, of course, education and science and these kind of things aren't valuable, aren't extremely valuable, don't build a better society when used correctly. The point is that they are being used together with all of these other mechanisms to enforce this thought process. This slow, progressive push is constant, and this is why it's always very difficult for the right to get in power and when it does for it to actually get anything done. Because even when the right controls all the theoretical hard power, there's this constant soft power of the media, of education, of universities, of Hollywood, and of entrenched government bureaucrats who don't actually have to get elected to keep their job from year to year. They're constantly working against the conservative or rightward movement while always pushing back the other direction to the left. This is why conservatives often have a hard time even using their own language, even defining their own terms, because all the people who control the discussion and control the debate, the educators, the media, they're part of the cathedral and they're invested in making sure that language that favors them is used and language that will slowly destroy the right wing or, or conservative causes is pushed. This is the basic concept of the cathedral. Again, this is there's a lot going on. This is just the very basics. Don't feel like I gave you the whole thing. If you want to do more research, I encourage you to do so. But I hope you enjoyed this quick explanation. I hope you enjoyed some Magic Arena, and I'll talk to you later.